Hey everybody, it's David with Philippine American Couple and welcome back to Chit Chat Time. Today, we have a very exciting topic and interview with you. We are going to be talking about shipping to the Philippines. And I have an expert shipper with me today. Mark, this is what he does. He wow. ships things all the way to the Philippines, right? That's right. So tell us a little bit about what you do. So we're a uh, considered a sub agent for Atlas Shippers International, which is uh, like my end forwarder to uh, to the Philippines, um, just to the Philippines. Just get that out there. We have a lot of inquiries from people that have friends from other countries that are interested in sending to like Thailand or India and stuff like that. But it's but like my end shipping is solely to the Philippines and it's one way. So, but uh, yeah, we've been um, agents for several companies over the years, but uh, we've been with Atlas, I think, the most the most of that time. Um, and uh, it's one of the bigger, the larger forwarders in the Philippines. Um, and you've been in it for at least, what, 10, 15 years, something like this? Since about 2003, yeah, around that time. time. Yeah, long it's time. been a monthly part of my life since then. <laughs> We've used them to ship items with, that's, that's how we know them. And uh, we're grateful for the service. You're Let, You're well, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's talk a little bit about options. What kind of options do we have if I want to get something to the Philippines? Right. So the, typically the first option that most people think of, and I'm, and um, Americans or you know people in this country that uh, male or female that may have a fiance over in the Philippines that uh, they've uh, started a relationship with and uh, maybe they're getting married, but um, first thing they ever want to do is send something over to their to their uh, boyfriend girlfriend, and um, they soon realize that. Uh, they make the mistake, however, of uh, shipping through traditional methods like the post office or DHL or FedEx. I don't think, yeah, you probably made that mistake. And you realize really quick that uh, there's got to be other ways to do this. And usually you find out through Filipino friends or people, other people that in the situation that you're in that have learned that mis through making that mistake um, that it's way too expensive to ship just, just the smallest package. I mean, the Philippines, if it has any weight to it. Um, you're going to be pushing, you know, several hundred dollars, and if it's a little larger, you'd be pushing up to eight to nine hundred dollars just for one package, and that's just not very cost effective. And you know, like, these people, you know, they generally just want to tell their their uh, love interest that uh, she'll just have to wait until the, until he comes to see her or or she comes here before she gets these things that they're sending. Right. But then they'll hear about Philippe Mayan shipping through another uh, Filipino or somebody else that's in their situation and has learned that, that lesson. Um, so, So, Bleak Bay Forwarders is just basically, um, it's a it's a company that has that's based in the Philippines, and they 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 have agents in the U.S. or in other countries around the world, and they collect boxes and ship containers of boxes to the Philippines, and from that point they're distributed around the Philippines. So typically they'll end up in Manila first, and then they're resorted um, by region. You know, if they're in Manila, they'll go out right away for delivery. Um, but uh, that's the non-traditional way of doing things. So um, anybody who has any questions about that, you know, just look it up you know, on Google about what the, the shipping services are in your area, if there are any. Um, but we represent Atlas, which is one of the larger companies uh, that, that do forwarding to the Philippines. Um, there's others like LBC, mm. which they're really big up in more bigger areas, but uh, here in, in uh, Northwest Arkansas, um, well, there's us Atlas and there's uh, some others. There's been other names that have come and gone. And the one thing I would recommend that uh, if you are looking into a forwarder is to to research them online and make sure that they are large enough to have the resources in the Philippines, the network to get the boxes delivered on time. Um, sometimes you'll have smaller forwarders that are kind of pop up here in the US and they they offer really low prices to ship it. Um, and all, all bleak man boxes are flat rate. So you pay one price, to ship it, that box can be, you know, 100 pounds, it can be 300 pounds. It doesn't matter by weight, it only matters by the size of the volume of the box. Um, it matters to us, the people that ship it, because, uh, you know, you gotta carry, you gotta it. carry it, you know, so, but um, <laughs> just keep in mind that, you know, a box can only hold, 
it's physically can only hold so many things until it really starts tearing itself apart, you know, because boxes, if they're too heavy, they're going to be pushed around and rolled around end, end over end. Every, every, you know, they, they try to take good care of the box, but, um, you know, if it's too heavy, it's like any kind of movement can actually start to, to cause, uh, the degradation of that box for it to compromise. So, but, um, so, yeah. So what do you do if you want to ship a large item? Are there options for shipping? I, like, I don't recommend you shipping a couch at the Philippines, but if you wanted to ship a, yeah. If you wanted to ship a couch, are there options? Uh, yes, you can still ship through a uh, land forwarding. It doesn't have to be, um, like one of our boxes that we have in stock to give the customers that says Atlas on it or, you know, for whatever company you want it to be, um, something that's going to, you want to, a box that's going to fit your item. So, um, it doesn't have to be our box. It can be in a regular box. It can be, say you have a carpet, you want to roll it up and ship it. You know, if you just, if you just put cardboard around it, you know, tape it up really good. So it's not compromised and it get wet any kind of damage, um, just give the forwarder the uh, dimensions of that box, the, the length times width times height, and they'll give you a quote for that. So, I mean, uh, you know, okay. different regions, the farther away from Manila you get, some, the price may get be more, but it, that's just uh, the nature of the business. I mean, the same here, UPS or the post office, you send something farther away than from you or closer to you, the price is gonna be more to ship it. So it's one price to get to Manila, essentially, but then it's a little bit more. So the box that's like, it goes to Manila, it could be, you know, say $108. And then a box to um, outside of Manila can be a, a few dollars more. And then a box that goes to Visayas or Mindanao can be, you know, maybe five, six, seven, eight dollars more too. So it just depends on where it's going. No, absolutely. And we've learned a lot the hard way over all these years of, of shipping things that sometimes, you know, for us, the user, uh, to be honest, it's probably better for us to send cash to our family over there yeah. versus, you know, shopping, packing, mm -hmm. uh, getting the box, putting it in and shipping it. So if it's a giant carpet or whatever, they have carpet in the Philippines. Right, yeah, I mean, it's just, if you have your own home there and you want to furnish it with your own yeah. way and, and you see something here, you buy it at a garage sale, you buy it at a really steep discount, you know, I mean, it's not going to add much to the cost of that item to ship it over there. Um, but I mean, we've shipped, you know, washing a washing machine to our home there just because we didn't like the the options that were there for washing machines. They just the, the quality at the time wasn't that good. A lot of that has improved um, since that time, but um, yeah, I mean televisions, you know, flat screen TVs used to be, you know, five ten years ago when flat screen TVs first came out, they were just really expensive in the Philippines. More so, it could be almost double the prices to buy it right. here, especially if you bought it on Black Friday or something like that. So, and we still offer that service, flat panel TVs, it's by the screen size, it's not by the box size, because it needs to be in the original packaging that you buy it from the store, if it was shipped to you from Amazon, you know, you can open it up, you know, you can you can make sure it works and all that, but you do not compromise the integrity of the packing material in any way, because if, if damage were to be incurred by the item there, the investigation would scrutinize whether or not extra items were stuffed in there. I mean, you don't put much canned food in with your the box that your TV was in, but you know uh, that that used to be something that was really big a couple of years ago. I think the prices in the TVs have have come down considerably. Last time I was there, priced them, I was kind of surprised. But at one time, you know, you could spend four hundred dollars to ship it. You know, that's be the price for like a fifty inch TV, but that's paying the import tax too and yeah. special handling that's given to the box. Um, so and you could still be ahead by several hundred dollars, you know, even with the cost of the TV added on to the cost of the shipping. So, um, but just do your research and, you know, talk to your local forwarder, you know, for something like that, for anything, any irregular item, just ask them uh, if they can ship it that size. Um, it gets, if it gets too big though, it's just, it's just not going to be feasible. It'd be really expensive. Like a refrigerator would yeah. be really expensive to ship. Just buy the, the cubic inch or cubic feet inside of it. So I have a bunch of stuff that I want to send to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. How do I do this? What do I do? And how do you, how, what role do you play? So we offer door to door service. Not all forwarders do that. Um, so, you know, you, you give us a call and we offer door to door to, uh, the metro areas here in, in Northwest Arkansas. We don't offer it to outlying areas that take more time to get to, or if you're in another state, we can arrange that and just be a, a fee tacked on top of that. But, um, or you can meet us in the, the, the nearest metro area 
to get the box. But if you live in a metro area, we'll, we, you can call us up. So you need a box, you know, uh, that will bring the box to your home. You know, boxes cost, you know, a small fee for the box. They used to be free, but that's kind of gone by the wayside. Most of the, just the cost of everything has gone up and forwarders can't really- We gotta pay for a box, that's okay. Right, well, I mean, we used, yeah. to, it used to be trades. Like, you know, you, get, you ship a box, we give you a box, you know, but yeah. it was like, you know, it got to the point where things just got, uh, the, the company, the, 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 the agents that we work for um, have to buy their boxes. So, and the cost went up considerably a couple of years ago, I think when gas and fuel prices went up. But, uh, you know, so we'll drop you a box and your shipping invoice and then you let us know when that box is ready. We'll give you a deadline, you know, when we're shipping and maybe for your town when there's a deadline, if you, you know, we need to pick it up before or on this date and uh, we'll come back, pick it up, we, I'll pick it up. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then, you know, whatever the date is, we'll tell you when it's going to leave, when uh, the company is picking it up from our home or from our house and then when it's going to leave. Kansas City is where they're shipped from, and then from there, how long it will be to the Port of Manila. I mean, but uh, it's basically door to door. We come to your door, get the, drop the empty box, we pick up the empty box, it is delivered to your relative or family member store in the Philippines. And for that, you know, that low rate, which is usually to Manila, it's like $108 plus $5 for the box. So, so no, it's a very good deal. Yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a good deal. What's the timeline from uh, when? Uh, they come pick it up from you mm -hmm. to take it to the Philippines. How long does that normally take? So we don't, we, we go by the time that it's going to leave the, the shipper or the agent instead of when they pick up from us because that, okay. that time is always different. It could be like only a week so a week difference from when they pick up to when the, the, the container leaves, leaves Kansas City for the West Coast. But um, sometimes it's earlier, you know, we've got a conflict with our time. Um, but you know, it's it's generally from the time it leaves Kansas City, we like to say it's about 45 to 50 days. It used to be sooner than that, but there's been uh, ongoing port um, improvements at Port of Manila that has you know caused the you know the the, the capacity to be, be smaller. You know, because they're working on some of it, so they can't get all the ships and all the container okay. ships to offload. So that adds to that time, and uh, we just like to give a little bit of a cushion because. Again, this isn't, uh, it's not FedEx, you know, this is, this is, you're at the mercy of so many factors on this thing. So um, whenever I give a time of an estimate, that's just, that is an estimate, an average. Um, it could go longer, it could be sooner. It's just that, you know, it's sooner sometimes, which is always nice. But uh, I mean, there are delays, there's weather, typhoons, there's, you know, we've had port strikes on the West Coast here where you know, we had a container that was stuck there for like two months, you know, and. You know, it's these are people's items, things that they pay money for, and they're worried about getting there on time or even getting there at all, especially if they've never shipped before. So, you know, we really, I really have to stress these things to them when I, whenever I do pick it up, if they ask me that. Um, there's just so many factors. I mean, I did have a, a box that I picked up one time, and I gave them the, you know, there's a tracking number. It's the boxes are are barcoded before they leave our place, and uh, you know, they, they're scanned into the system a couple of weeks after they leave Kansas City. So, you know, it's not like instant tracking, but you know, I, I told one of our customers about the tracking and I picked it up, you know, brought it home and the, the, the box was in my garage and I got a text from that person the next day asked, saying that they tried to track their box and they didn't know where it was. And it's like, I, it's in my garage. I'll take a picture if you want and show you where it is. You can come over and visit it if you want, but uh, it'll be here for another week until it leaves. I mean, it's just basically how it works, but it, you know, some people, you know, you know, quickly grasp onto the idea of how like FedEx here uh, to pay the bill, and it's yeah, it's gone. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you know, we're, it's now you mentioned that. the word container a couple times. Yeah. What so do you, what do you mean by that? Like a cargo shipping container, like you see on a cargo ship on you know on, on the ocean, you know, if you see on TV, or if you if you've been to a port facility and you've seen all the containers stacked up. We see them around here in our area too, but they're very common over in the Philippines if you live near a port area, but or by any port area in any country. But um, so they're different sizes. There's like a 20 foot and a 40 foot, you know, containers, and typically, it, you know, it, it just depends on the time of year, you know, what they're shipping, and sometimes, you know, it, uh, sometimes uh, they have more than what they have space in the container for. You know, I mean, sometimes. Sometimes things are delayed that way, but you know, these are, these are around when, uh, you know, at the time of year that typically on average, they know that this is a slow period. So they have a container that's this big, but sometimes for, for whatever reason, it's like there was more boxes than anticipated. 
you know, COVID has been really hard to judge that right yeah. now. So it's like we've had, like our typically our really busy months have been, uh, busy month like September, um, we were below our, our hot water mark for that, like well below it. But then the next month we were like way above what our average had been, you know, for several years for boxes too. So, I mean, it's, it's been kind of wild to judge it, you know, and there's been a lot of people worried about uh, the delivery of uh, bleak buying boxes uh, since COVID has happened over here, you know, worldwide. And um, the, uh, the, the owners of Atlas, you know, put out a bulletin on their website, basically just making sure that everybody understands that uh, bleak buy in service, you know, delivery service is considered an essential business in the Philippines. So if you ship a box and there's a lockdown in your area where your relative lives or where you're sending it to, um, the box will still make it through um, as long as there's not been some kind of just complete block going on. So, but yeah, it'll still get through. Just don't worry about it sitting somewhere. You know, the main thing is just don't worry about your box too much. It's in good hands. <laughs> and to clarify, people do worry about it sometimes. What we're talking about is a shipping container that goes on a ship and versus a plane. Right. So that's Instead kind of sea cargo. Sea cargo. Instead of air cargo. Like right. people are used to shipping DHL if they're going to ship to the Philippines or FedEx. It's, it's, if you go to the U.S. Post Office, they're going to probably use air cargo. It's still air cargo, yeah. And that's why it costs you so much money. Right. And, and it's still going to take a while to get there. But, right. yeah, this is sea cargo, mm -hmm. so, which is good. And, and we, we've yeah. done it. And, and the one thing that people learn, too, real fast is to not use the post office only because of, you know, and not just in the Philippines, but many countries, you know, you, once, you, you know, going from one country's postal service to the other, the it doesn't systems, work. They don't jive sometimes. They yeah. don't, and, and one is not as efficient. And sometimes you really get scrutinized over um, tariff items. You know things that would be they would you would pay duty on. You know we've run into that stories with uh, customers of ours in the past. And you know so if you do want to send something, it's best to send it look by inbox or through a you know a private company like DHL or, or FedEx, just so it doesn't hit the postal system in the country of destination because uh, they, they, the rules and the customs laws can really come into play there. You may end up paying more money well, once you get there. And what a lot of people don't understand is compared to the United States, the Philippines doesn't have zip codes like we do. Uh, the addressing system, 911 system, is not the same in the they Philippines. They do have, they have postal codes. Postal codes. They have postal codes, but they don't, yeah. But their addresses may be very, uh, very vague or very. I mean, when we send, when we send to our family's place in, in Mindoro, um, it's a small, it's a small area. It's not really small, but uh, but uh, you know, we consider it a, a smaller town than mm -hmm. the, the metro area. And you just put uh, put it, put the name of the relative, the town, or you know, Mindoro or into Mindoro, Philipp Philippines, and that's it. You know, it's typically. They, there's no address, but you know, then once they get to that town, they ask in the municipal area where this person lives, and they'll tell them where it is. I mean, because everybody knows everybody usually in these smaller, mm -hmm. smaller towns in the, in the provinces. So, yeah, that's a, one of the problems that we run into. Right. People don't. The husband doesn't really understand. Is like, you know, there's no way this box is going to be delivered that's where right. it's supposed to because this is not an address. It's that's like, right. well, it doesn't make sense to us in the way we do things here, but it makes complete sense over there. It does. Yeah. So do you have any good tips about how to pack our box? Um, packing the box is, is one of the more important areas of it. You know, I mean, it's one of the most important things it is to, to protect your items. Um, if you've got a, a box like ours, it's, a, it's, a, it's considered a jumbo box. We have one size box. We used to have two, but um, it's no longer offered by the company. But again, we'll take any box, you know, um, within reason. Um, as long as uh, you give us the dimensions, but the box that we give to our customers is 24 by 17 by 24. So it's um, it's about knee height and uh, knee knee length, and you know about 17 inches, just under Chair you know, just a little over you know, foot. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah, as far as the width goes, and um, it's a lot of space to put things in. If you have a pile of stuff that you're going to send, and then you put it in a box, you may end up with a lot more room left over than you thought. Um, you need to fill that box completely and solidly. You know, so if you have old, older clothes, you know, relatives, coworkers, and that's one of the great resources for people that send things is uh, coworkers, you know, donating baby clothes, giving you clothes, shoes that they don't use anymore, not stuff that's worn out, but things that's still very useful. Um, just 
doesn't serve a purpose for somebody there now. It could serve some purpose for somebody in the Philippines, and um, you want the that stuff box that, to be... The stuff that Americans consider garbage, other countries do not. Yeah, or just something that they would give away or, or donate yeah. to Goodwill or something. Um, it's going to get the traction over there much longer, you know, much longer use where, um, but you, your box needs to be solid. You need to, it doesn't need to have an ink give on it and on any sides of it because it's going to be inside of a container, you know, with stacked, you know, boxes stacked on it, maybe three or four high, depending on how they orient the boxes. Um, and they try to put the heavier boxes on the bottom, but still, it's like, you're still going to have the, that stack going on all the weight coming down on the box. So you want the integrity, not to, just to, to get crushed around the edges or anything like that because you want to protect your items if you have items inside that are fragile like like plates or, or uh, you know drinking glasses or anything like that you need to ensure that they are um they're well padded between each other they're not touching you know you know just you know you've got like wrap them in a t-shirt or you know put, put socks around them just anything to to create a cushion around each item individually because um, the heavier the box is, the, the likelier that the box may, you know, not be picked up, but may be rolled around end over end. Um, that's just the way it has to be done sometimes. It's not that... Well, they're heavy. Yeah, they're heavy. I mean, we have, everyone should have, a, everyone has dollies. I have a dolly when I pick up the boxes too, but um, like taking, if somebody lives on the second floor of an apartment building, um, it's, it's safer to roll that box carefully down, but assist, you know, end over end, assisting it down the, the stairs as opposed to putting it on the dolly and taking it down because it's every, with every step you go down there's going to be bounce and it could bounce off the dolly even if, you know, sometimes if you have it strapped on there if it's a heavy box so i mean these, these are things you need to keep in consideration you know and if you've got a lot of fragile items then maybe you need to to spread it across two boxes and not try to pack it all in one because you need to have again like a good buffer around the outside not just the buffer between items, but the cushioner on all four sides of those items. So, yeah, um, and, and no voids. You know, if there's like if you if you send shoes or a container or something like that, um, put stuff in it. You know, I mean, you know, shoes are one thing, but you know, you want to make sure that you're maximizing your you know your space that you're that you're sending. You know, some people will will have like a say they send a bucket. You know, just for 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 instance and. Uh, they may not put anything in that bucket, you know, it could just be an empty void space in that box, you know, and that's that space wasted, you know, as far as what you're paying. Yeah, one tip you gave us a long time ago, I think it was you or somebody did, um, is that we use the space bags. So yeah. We yeah. put clothing in them and mm -hmm. we vacuum seal them. Yeah, the vacuum clean, the vacuum bags, those are good yep. for clothes. Um, you know, also if you have, just like if you're traveling, you know, if you're air travel, you know, if you're traveling in the Philippines, you, you have any kind of liquid item in your bag, Make sure that they are sealed. You, you want to tape the lids on them and then like double, double plastic bag them. Just do everything. If it does leak, it doesn't you know ruin everything else around it. I mean, we've had um, we had a, we had a uh, in our, one of our own boxes had a uh, you know the, the toilet bowl cleaner, the blue yeah. stuff. You know, we had one of, we had some of that in there, and it's uh, and it was taped up and was in a bag. But we didn't double bag it, and it leaked, and it you know, it ruined some like leather items. You know, yeah. Like a, like some shoes or something like that. They were just, you know, we didn't want, they weren't supposed to be blue shoes. So, <laughs> so that, you know, they were, they were trashed. Those were trashed at that point, you know, throw those away. But um, yeah, food items, you know, just make sure that, uh, you know, that they can't be crushed or compromised in any way. Just common sense, you know, basically, you know, just when you pack it, just take care of it. Make sure that your, your items gonna get there. Well, and I think the key to this is since you're spending your money send something so far um, across the world, be smart about your box. Yeah, definitely. I mean, take advantage of the fact that the box can weigh 300 pounds. Yes. I mean, they sadly, were, that's what we do. I, you know, I, yeah. I cram them full of everything I can think of. A big box that size full of canned food, we have customers that do that and they can weigh, they can push 300 pounds. And uh, yeah. Um, other things to just keep in mind is if you're sending toys that like um, that have batteries in them, take the batteries out because it's going to corrode. Anything that has batteries in it, take the batteries out. Period, because it's going to, you know, it, it could be you know two months, you know, and you know not knowing how all the batteries are are that are already in there, but you know just put them in a Ziploc or something to separate them so your item doesn't corrode and just get ruined that way. Also, you know, it's it's very strange sometimes when we're picking up a box, you know, and 
all of a sudden the box starts making noise, you know, and you know, it starts ticking, you know, not ticking, but yeah, like, a, you know, animal sounds or, you know, you can tell their kids toys or whatever, but I mean, it's not, I mean, it's not like against the rules or anything, but it's like, you know, a little just, creepy. You know, somebody might be curious enough to where, and they think that it's something that needed to be investigated, you know, I mean, we'd never do that, but uh, somebody on the other end might too, I mean, so don't, don't, don't do anything that's, you don't want any more attention than usual to be caught, you know, drawn to your box. So, I mean, so if, there's, if it makes noise, make sure it's not going to make noise. You know, take the batteries out. Um, the box will have two compression straps on the, the nylon straps. They, you know, they're essentially tight that uh, give it a little more integrity to the box to make sure it doesn't bust open or something like that. I mean, we, you know, uh, you know, just like with anything, you know, you, you're, it's going to get maybe a ding or two in it. So if your box, when it arrives to its destination, there might be like a little, you know, like a, like a hole in the box. And that's not that the box has been compromised by an individual. Um, it may have been, it was bumped. Uh, another box may have bumped into it, you know, and you've got two heavy objects that collide, the, the, the weaker the two is going to give in some way. And usually it's the, the skin on the other box that's the receiving end of that. So, um, All right. yeah, that happens from time to time. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's, but it's not like something that's, uh, you know, somebody has like tried to get into the box. It's just, so I got my box all packed up. I got a pool. I got it nice and solid and I'm ready to tape it up. Mm -hmm. What are your suggestions for taping the box? Only use duct tape. If you're going to put clear tape over it, um, duct tape is, is great strength but it also likes, it's not meant for cardboard. Um, if, you, yeah. if you've ever put duct tape on cardboard and left it in a dry environment or even a, a hot environment, you'll, you'll notice that in off. both way, in both conditions, it's gonna come up. It's like, you'll start, you know, if you tape a box shut, it'll be dog earring by the time, yeah. by the next morning usually. Um, so you wanna use just clear packing tape over the duct tape. I mean, you can just use clear packing tape. That's fine too. Just make sure it's, that everything is sealed good you know, and that you've, you know, you want to seal it by, you want the tape touching itself. You don't want the tape just touching the box because any tape is going to come off of cardboard eventually if it's dry enough. So before it leaves here, if it's the winter time, some of that stuff may kind of unstick itself. People, some people use shrink wrap, you know, they're just they're the biggest, like the big rolls of like saran wrap. Like you see when they, when they put pallets together yeah. and stuff, um, that's all great, but make sure that you don't write on the outside of that as far as your address and everything, um, make sure it's on the box underneath because that stuff could get come, that could come off in some way, shape or form because of just the, the nature of the boxes being moved around. Um, and so, you know, the, the tape, you know, is very important. The address is also very important. So um, you can write on the box directly, you know, the address for your relative, make sure that there's always a phone number on there in the Philippines for your relative two phone numbers if necessary, um, just, just in case the, the invoice and the box somehow gets separated, you know, in the process of, of getting to the Philippines. Um, so there's no guesswork as to, you know, as to where this box goes. Um, sometimes I'll show up to a customer's house and they haven't put uh, an, anything on it, not an address or anything. And, you know, just be sure that, you know, when you're, when the person comes to take your box, that it does have an address. Um, and a phone number or two and your name and address just just like on a piece of paper you know like you would like you would print out on your on your on an address label on your computer you know just in small left hand corner your name address phone number and then just fill the rest of the page up big time with a very you know, bold huge font it's you know with the address and all and, the and i think that's a great tip versus you trying to handwrite it if you can yeah if your it. handwriting is like mine you yeah. don't want them to try to guess where it's supposed to be going so yeah. very clear and legible if you're going to write it on there um and um put it on two two uh, points in the box you want one on the top of the box and one on the end i mean just so you know they, there's two different places that they can find the address you know and usually it's how they so they can see when they stack it or something like that. And um, I'll remember in a second. One of the things well, I and one of the things that I like doing when, when we ship a box, uh, taping wise, is we tape, of course, all the way around, across, so that we try to get the tape to be more structural. Right, yeah. So we crisscross it to help hold it together. You'd be surprised how some people will put very little tape on their box, like just, 
I've had customers just literally just across the, the fold, you know, right. the ends, to close it, close it down, and and the others that go, you know, it's better to go overboard. You know, more tape is better than less tape. So, I mean, but some customers basically, I mean, they will entirely wrap it in duct tape, and then they will entirely wrap it, Ooh. yeah, the whole box. I mean, from top to bottom, there's not a surface that's not untaped. First is duct tape, and then it's clear tape. So, but at least they're, you know, that's not going overboard. It's just, it's just ensuring that you know, that your items are secure, the integrity is there and it'll make it the whole way. I mean, um, because you just, you never know what's gonna happen, you know, as far as, you know, you know, just, just you know, a, a box getting uh, accidentally drops. I mean, you know, this is, it's the human factor in it. So you wanna make sure that your box isn't gonna pop open or something like that. So just be sure that, you know, cover the top and the bottoms where all the seams, anywhere there's a seam, you know, make sure that is taped shut, you know, and that's, the integrity is there. Yeah. So, what type of items should we not ship? Um, well, first and foremost, anything that you wouldn't be carrying on your person anyway. I mean, so no, no guns, no drugs, no, you know, no uh, prohibited <laughs> items, you know. I mean, this is the common sense, right? Um, and uh, anything that would be considered contraband, you know. Um, you can send, you can send a machete, um, you can send kitchen knives. I mean, again, these are tools, you know. I mean, you can send, um, you know, you know, I've had somebody send a like a, a sport, like a, a spear gun for sport for sport fishing over there. I mean, that's kind of a gray area. Um, check with your forwarder if you have any questions about that, and they could they can ask higher up. But um, you know, if if it's something that's considered a, a tool, and a, you know, a handgun is could be arguably could be a tool, but it's not <laughs> um, um, like a like a hunting knife or something like that. You, you might just try to. Put that in your luggage when you go over there. I mean, I've I've carried, I've They're, carried your checking your checking bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah your checking bag to fly over there. I mean, <laughs> I mean, again, like putting a good hunting knife in a box, and you know, you, you know, not that something's gonna happen in the box, but uh, you know, again, something you want to have on your with you when you travel. Put it in your check bag, you know, because um, I've had pocket knives and stuff like that that I've had with me and never had a problem with that. Um, uh, and then you get into things that are considered commercial items for resale. So basically, Believe My End shipping is all about you getting something to your relative that assists them in their daily life. You know, it's food, clothing, you know, kitchen utensils, you know, a birthday gift or something like that. I mean, it's a person to person thing. Anything that you send that would be for resale is considered a commercial item and could potentially incur a duty in taxes once it gets there. It doesn't necessarily, it doesn't really work that way. Not every box is being inspected for these things, but if there was ever an audit that was done or a pop inspection by the Bureau of Customs in the Philippines, um, you could be, get popped for uh, for more duty. Um, that, that also includes um, what they consider in the Philippines, ukay ukay, which is basically like uh, stuff for uh, uh, thrift store items, you know, thing, you know, like used clothes that you're sending over there for resale in your sister's uh, sorry, sorry store that's in you know the front of her home or something like that. And uh, also, um, car parts can be uh, a gray area. I mean, like one car part that you're sending over there, you know, because your relative has a Honda that needs this part and, you know, they can't get it there. But if you're sending a box full of car parts, that can be considered, you know, you're, you're potentially stolen goods, you know, came from a chop shop in the, in the Philippines. It's called chop chop. If you look at the, if you look at the uh, chipping invoice, it'll say that directly that uh, mm -hmm. no chop chop items or ukai ukai items. So um, anything that would be, uh, you would benefit from monetarily over there. You're just, you know, the boxes should be only, you're spending money not to make money. You're spending money to help somebody over there. So, or for yeah, furniture. Like home. returning gifts. Yeah, I just really by is, yeah, return in returning home. So it's the gifts and stuff like that. You know, the, our biggest our biggest time of year is Christmas. So people should sending Christmas gifts and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's what it's supposed to be. Um, but some people, you know, want to send little other things and um, just check with your forwarder, whoever whoever's handling your box, ask them those questions and well, just to make sure. Just don't take just, my word for it. Yeah, we just got to keep in mind that it's just like in the United States, the IRS yeah. in the United States one wants their share right you know yeah, in the and philippines it's the same way yes so it just makes sense yeah and nothing wrong with it it's just yeah and the customs and customs and tariffs modernization act of 
2016 that came about because of a lot of this, that uh, people were sending um, contraband items and uh, you know car parts and anything for resale value for resale over there. Um, the, the, the government got sick of it, I guess. So they they they, they, they changed their they updated their uh, their tariffs and uh, customs laws, and uh, you know, rightfully so. I mean, you know, because uh, I mean, every other country, you know, is along these lines now. I mean, you, if you send something through the post office or DHL or FedEx, you you have to list everything that's in that box, and you get to give a value and what its purpose is. So um, we ask the same thing um, now with the, with our invoices um, when we ship when customers ship their boxes through. Atlas or through most other forwarders, um, the typical shipping invoice is going to look like this. And at the very bottom, here there is a uh, area for your shipping or your packing list for all the items you're shipping. And um, this is this is an honor system. I mean, um, we're not going to enforce this, but you know, when, by signing this this invoice, you're basically abiding by all the rules of you know the customs laws in the Philippines. So um, you don't want to. Get out, you know, get off track of this, you, but you want to make sure that you you put, you know, an estimated idea. You know, so a lot of people they pack their box and they may not ship it for a couple months and they forgot what they put in there. So, you know, the best idea, the best recollection of what you know is in there and the value of the items and the total value of the box um, before the, the modernization and customs modernization tariffs act came about in the Philippines. A lot of uh, people would just put assorted items on here and maybe put a value on it, but you know, they wouldn't list it, just assorted items. Um, and you can't do that anymore. It's just, uh, it's gotten a little more serious than that. Um, you know, it's, nobody's going to come knocking on your door and, and hold you accountable for it. But again, if there were to be a, um, an audit or a, or a inspection, that could, something could be discovered that you're not being forthright about in your package. So I'm gonna have you um, help me with, with this in a second, but, I know there's going to be a question that the that, that our, our friends are going to want to know mm -hmm. the answer to. Alcohol. Alcohol. Um, if you read the read the box or read the the form, it says, you know, alcohol is a prohibited item. So. Now I heard a rumor that uh, some people label it juice. Yeah, you can label what you want. You know, um, but again, no, it is illegal. Again, the the. This, your shipping invoice and your box, you know, when they run the Philippines, they're not going to be inspected and uh, open, scrutinized. They're, it's, this is all on file with Atlas, but should there ever be a pop inspection or, um, you know, any kind of scrutiny that, that goes about it, um, yeah, you may be held accountable for what you have in your box. So um, always, always knowing that, you know, you, you know, whatever your, you know, whatever you're willing to uh, risk to, to risk is, <laughs> is up to the individual. You know, um, do you know about that in your daily life? I don't know, but uh, yeah. So just, just just understand it's it's not a fire and forget thing. You know, I mean there there could be um, there could be penalties if you're if you're not following the rules. Could be, and you know, and, and I there will be. right. And I say it jokingly. Look, I think I think you got to really put this in the context. You know, if you ship over a bottle of alcohol and you call it juice, well, that's one thing. But if you're trying to sneak firearms or drugs yeah. into another country, yeah. you're going to go to jail when it gets caught. Because all these box, boxes the boxes are, are snipped by drugs. They're x-rayed too. Every, every, the so, containers are x-rayed. So yeah. they'll, you know, they're not going to see bottles of alcohol, but they will see gun parts. Because um, they use the modern, um, every container is, is x-rayed by the... Uh, the the uh, x-ray machines that are on the backs of semis. So they are brought past or it, it scans every container when it arrives, I, I assume on all four sides. It and, is. Um, right, and um, they, they can see into that container and they can see where something is. So if they see something that's suspicious, they then they will um, yeah, they will do that. And if your box is, uh, if, if you have something in your box that that is considered illegal, especially gun parts or you know drugs or something like that. Your 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 items will be confiscated, probably your entire package. But you will also be held accountable by the company Atlas for any penalties, fines, or 
any, anything that the you know that, that is incurred upon the company will then be um, sought after to from you by the company through legal means because you've compromised their integrity. So, um, and then somebody with the badge may come knocking at your door too. Well, yeah, that too. I mean, that, the law the law part of it is completely <laughs> different, but you're also you will be you know that, that hundred eight dollars that you send can can be can turn into ten thousand dollars that you will be owed the company too because of the fines that they had to pay because of and you sending something you shouldn't have. So um, try to carry it on yourself if you want to get over there, but just don't, don't. Well, just don't do it. Don't do it, yeah. Just don't do it. Yeah. So I'm going to, to put this in the video, uh, a copy of this front and back for you guys. But Mark, if you would, kind of just give us some tips or rundown about how to best fill out this paperwork. Oh, well, it's all self-explanatory. The main thing, you know, sender and with the with the uh, Customs Modernization Tariffs Act, you have to be accountable for, we have to be accountable for who is shipping the box. So we have to see an identification, uh, a driver's license or or uh, just a, a state license, state ID, or uh, your passport. But I mean, we have to, we have to put down the number of the ID, you know, your driver's license or whatever it is you're showing us, expiration dates, and it, it can't be expired, you can't give us an expired ID, and it has to be, have, we have to have your date of birth. And some people are weird about this, but um, these three items in themselves, you're not really, even with your name, you're not going to incur any, um, you know, identity theft or anything. I mean, we're not asking for a social security number or anything like that. Your, your ID card number should be separate from your social security number. Um, I know years ago, people, you had the option of getting your driver's license with your social security number. Nobody does that anymore because they know it's it's yeah. not a good thing to do for identity theft. But uh, and then just standard stuff, you know, telephone number, email address if you want to give it. But then your relative, you know, just their address, their information. That's just ask for their address, their telephone numbers. Maybe if you want to give an email. Um, well, now let's make sure, that's, right? The, the big key here that is on um, where your family member is, the address that you're going to put here, it needs to be the exact same thing on the box. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Sometimes they'll, sometimes they forget, you know, or they put something else. They have to, they have to be, they have to synchronize. It has to be the same with, with, with the box. So I mean, you could put a uh, care of on there or something like that. Just be sure to put it on the box, um, you know, or a second, two people's names. Maybe they live in the same house or they live next door to each other. It's got to be on the box. Just, uh, just make sure it all adds up to each other. And, um, and your packing list. Everything else will. You know, as far as Atlas's invoice, other companies may be different, but I will fill out the rest when I pick up your box, you know, as far as the uh, the number of boxes and just make sure that all the signatures are on here and everything. So, yeah. No, it's pretty straightforward. It is pretty straightforward. It really um, is. On the back of ours, there is a place where you, where you can initial all of the all of the rules of, of shipping. Um, most most customers that have sent with us before ice we assume at that point they already know that so um but uh yeah if you're a first time shipper the main thing is to read the back of these, these forms there's just it's the same on all of them so you read the, the main one but you know you'll get a copy you'll, you'll get an actual copy of your invoice and again if you if i give them, I mean, when you ship your box and you know this is your this is your receipt so um, I've had several Keep customers that will call me later on because they don't have their invoice number, but it's, this is a receipt. So this is the, this is the only proof that you have that you sent the box. So, um, if something were to happen, um, and you don't have this, then you, you wouldn't have a case for, you know, for, you know, filing a case for a lost box or something like that. So please hang on to these. This isn't something that you just want to like put in this in the trash can or, or in the, the shredding pile or something like that you want to put this in a folder or a file or somewhere where you can find it when you need it because one one the tracking numbers on here but two it's 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 the proof that you actually sent a package one of the things that we do is we actually take a photo of it with our our phones right. and we email it to ourselves and i just leave it in the email right that way i can go back yeah. and dig it out and yeah. um and or you know you can send it to relevant relative yeah. there too, but yeah. it's also but you know depending on how how um, if your relative has done this before, um, sometimes the rule of thumb is if if you if you've never sent a box to them before, it's maybe not a good, good idea to let them know that you're sending the box until that time gets close oh, because yeah. they'll start. We we have many situations. <laughs> 
almost always the, the, the relative in the Philippines it gets really anxious just weeks after the box has been picked up and yes. it's in no way, shape or form even close to being to the Philippines and let alone delivered. And they start we worrying and they start calling yeah. their, calling the, who, who, the family member who shipped the box on our end and really getting them worried because of maybe some stories that they've heard of other people with a bad situation with the box that they had one time. Um, it just puts a bug in their, in their mind that just doesn't need to be there in some cases. Um, that's that's entirely up to you if you if you've but if I you agree. can handle it. But yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Don't and we've had we've had people that have been really frantic, you know, and it's just like I tell them, it's just you know, it's okay, don't worry about it. It'll be there when I say it's there. And usually, by the time they really start panicking, um, I mean, like clockwork, it's delivered within a day or two of that time. Especially mm -hmm. if it's right up around that period of time. So um, just avoid any unnecessary drama on your end, you know. <laughs> You can tell them you're sending a box, but you maybe not tell them when it's due. You know, I mean, just just for everybody's peace of mind, because it it's not a fast process. It can take, you know, forty five to fifty days. You know, but it is it is a really good process. Oh, the pro yeah, it's. I mean, there's no the, other way to send things over there. I mean, we've sent, gosh, I mean, we've sent. You know, I can't even I can't even begin to count the number of boxes. And when we travel back home to the Philippines, um, once a year, usually we've been going home every year for like. I don't know, since 2013 and we always have like just a a ton of boxes waiting for us when we get there that we send to our ship to our house um where a relative is, is staying at our home and uh i mean sometimes we'll have 10 or more boxes to yeah. open when we get there and it's like christmas for yourself you know it's like yeah. you send all these it's like a time capsule you've sent all this stuff maybe a year ago yeah. and you, you forgot yeah. what you sent um, well, that's when you find out that the toilet bowl cleaner opened up in it and, you know, like, <laughs> you know, things like that are broken. But I mean, you know, again, it's like very, very few items are ever damaged. It's just, there will be a, the occasional few. It's just the nature of it, you know? Well, I, and I think what's fun is it's like, as you mentioned, it is kind of like Christmas for them. Uh, you yeah. know, we, we, we make our relative and, and friends when they get it, we won't let them open it. Until they Facebook or yeah, live, do live, Facebook live, live, live streaming live or streaming. whatever, mm -hmm. so they they get to do it in front of us, and it's kind of like a, a big deal. You yeah, know, they all get around and yeah, they're excited, know. they're screaming and hollering, and you know, just make sure that everybody that's going to be there has something in that box. Oh yeah, well, you get trouble there. So. <laughs> yeah. Any any uh, last words about uh, this process? No, just um. You know, if you, if you, especially if you're new to just the, the, the Philippines experience, you know, um, please, you know, check, you know, check with the, re the, the sources that you have to send over there. I mean, if, uh, if you don't know of any Billy Fan shippers, go online, find out the, find out like Atlas or LBC, the Forex maybe. Um, there's a lot of different companies. Um, there's, there's really large ones and smaller ones, but, uh, Find if there's an agent in your area that, that is shipping because you know we just don't want you to have to spend five times the amount of money that you would spend by shipping one of our boxes as opposed to shipping it through a traditional means because it's, it's painful you know when you the first time you've ever done that and and to be honest it's like you're you know you know the the likelihood of your package getting lost through the post postal system is is much greater just so much greater than than something ever getting lost in the look by end shipping you know uh, industry i mean uh, it just if it does happen it's very very rare i mean i mean damage may be incurred in some cases i mean the, but again it's the nature of shipping anything that long distance i mean you, you send something you know you get stuff delivered here from amazon and you know nine times out of or nine times out of ten it's fine but you know sometimes it's damaged so i mean it's just the nature of humans touching things, you know, I mean, or, you know, but yeah, just, just find out if you have like my shipping in your area, if you're wanting to send to the Philippines, for sure. Friends, thanks for watching. Hey, if you want to see more videos like this from the Philippine American couple, do us a favor, subscribe, like, hit that alert bell, and of course, share the videos. We'll see you guys next time. Take care.